Let's have a look at the concept of the Goldfeld Quant test. There's two things to understand about this test. First of all, it's related with time series. So this is a time series test, which we're going to explain in a second. And second of all, it's a test on heteroskedasticity. Heteroskedasticity. Now, why is this a time series test? Because we take data of a specific process, for instance, sales in a company. Let's say we sell clothes in a, in a fashion store. And we want to see how our sales vary across time. So we have the time variable over here. Now, why is that interesting to us? Because first of all, we have a thought that if we sell more in a specific year, that means that we generated more customers. We are more popular in the fashion industry. So we're more likely to sell, to, to increase our sales in the future periods. And we want to see if that trend is true or not. So we would like to have an upward trend of sales across time. But at the same time, we want to we want to know how the volatility of the sale is going. So do we have constant sales or our or our sales are very, um, you know, sporadic, sometimes low, sometimes high. So that's what are we testing with the Goldfield Quant test. Now, how are we actually doing that? We're having the data over here. Suppose there's an example sales for 16 years from the year 2000 until 2016. So we have 16 observations. To test for this heteroscedasticity, namely, how is the variation of the sales across time? And by the way, intuitively, just by looking at the graph, we can see that the variation around $3,000 of sales a month, let's suppose this is the most common uh, sales number per month, the average, so to speak. We can see that in the first couple of years, there's very little variation around that value, but later on, the variation increases more. It swings much more around the 3000 benchmark now how are we actually gonna test to confirm it with numbers not just with the graph what we're doing we're taking a middle part of the observations and delete it from the data and then we compare the remaining two sub samples so in our case we have 16 observations 16 years we, uh, the sample is quite small so we're gonna delete around a fifth of the sample so 16 divided by 5 that's gonna be 3 point something let's say we delete three observations from the sample somewhere in the middle like that these ones are gone from the sample and what we're left with is these two smaller samples this one over here and the other one over there and we are going to test the variation in each of them and compare them to each other so what we're doing now we're testing variation test variance test variance now how are we testing the variance in these two sub samples we're testing them with an f test so we're having an F-test where we're going to compare the variation that is larger relative to the variation that is smaller. And the intuition is that if this one is much larger than this one, then we have enough evidence that there is indeed different variation across time. So the variation is not constant, aka we have heteroscedasticity. That's, that's the intuition of the test. So we would compute this F value and what do we compare it with? Because as always we compare with the critical value. The F critical value in our case would be the number of observation of the larger variance, the number of, observ the number of observations in the subsample with the larger variance, let me say it extensively so it's more clear, minus the number of parameters in the model, minus one, and the other degrees of freedom is going to be the number of observations in the subsample with a smaller variance minus the number of parameters in the model minus one. And for the sake of our example, let's just suppose that if we delete three, three data points over here, we're left with, we're left with 13 in total because we have 16 observations minus three, we're left with 13. These 13 observations must be split into two subsamples. So let's say it would be six in the first subsample seven in the seventh uh, in the second sum sample i'm sorry now if we substitute this into our critical value f we would have over here over here let's suppose we have seven observations for the larger variation and then we have six observations for the smaller variation then the, the number of parameters is the number of independent variables in the model and for the sake of the example let's suppose that our model is mainly sales across time depending on a specific constant alpha plus beta times the effect of sales from the previous period. So T minus one plus a certain error that varies across time. So the independent variable in this model is the lagged value of sales. So we would have 
the number of parameters equals to one here and there. And that would be the critical value of f. And as usual, we would compare f with the critical value of f. If we can, if we can reject the null hypothesis, if the f critical value, if the f critical value is less than our f value, so we are in the rejection region and we say that we reject the null hypothesis, we reject the null hypothesis, then we have enough evidence that the variances in the two subsamples differ significantly. The variances in the two subsamples, subsamples, differ significantly. And that's it. That's the intuition of the test. We do it with an F test. And the main thing to understand is why do we do it? Because we want to see if the variation across time is constant or not. Hope this makes sense. And we are done.